the activity section doesn't have specific rules. The only thing that I want you to be aware of is that The Old Pre-Meds Podcast, session number 286. And welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray. Before we jump into our great question today, something that a lot of non-traditional students have a question about, I wanna talk about the MCAT Minutes brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. Now, I'm supposed to talk to you about how many times you can take the MCAT, but I think we all know that by now. You can take it seven maximum in a lifetime, three per year, and four times in two years. And I pray, I pray that none of you have to take it more than once because it is expensive and it's a beast of a test. I know that when I applied to medical school and didn't get in the first time and I needed to reapply, there was this, this doubt in my head that said, if I need to retake the MCAT, I don't think I wanna go to medical school because I hated the test that much. So before before we dive further in, you know how many times you can take the MCAT, but for more help on the MCAT, go to blueprintmcat.com and sign up for a free account and get access to their brand new spaced repetition flashcard platform where you can get over 1,600 flashcards made by MCAT experts at Blueprint MCAT. Again, that's with a free account over at blueprintmcat.com. So our question today is a great one about job promotions and being in a specific place for a lot of years as a non-traditional student, working your way up a career ladder and then applying to medical school. How do you show that in an application? And this comes up not only in the corporate world or as you'll see in this situation, kind of a non-corporate small business world, but also a ton in the military world where you wear lots of hats and you get promoted and you have more responsibility and so many other things when you pin on that new rank. So this specific question should hopefully answer a lot of your questions depending on where you are at in the process. So our student asked how to list job promotions on an application. Hey everybody, I'm currently the general manager of a bakery and have been working there for over seven years beginning as a counter server while in college. How would you recommend titling work experience for applicants who have received promotions? List the entry as the most recent title and weave the promotions somewhere in the description section. I don't want to give a false impression that I've been the GM for my entire time there. Am I overthinking this? This job was incredibly life-changing, so at this point, I intend to mark it as one of my most meaningful experiences. Appreciate any insight you can provide. Thanks. So this is a great question. And again, it's one that comes up a lot of times, especially from our military members. And my answer is there are a lot of ways to do this. And I want you to realize that the activity descriptions, the activity section doesn't have specific rules. The only thing that I want you to be aware of is that number one, when you're marking things as most meaningful, which I'm excited this person said, hey, I'm marking working at a bakery as most meaningful because that's great because that's true to who this person is. I want you to remember that most meaningful doesn't have to be specific to medicine. So that's number one. The next biggest thing when it comes to not having rules with the activity section but having some general thoughts is that you have to be careful when writing all of your hours. I don't want it to look like you worked 2,000 hours across full-time work one year for one thing, but you also worked a part-time job that same time and had another 1,000 hours over the same time period as the 2,000-hour job that you had because that starts to look a little weird with your hours. You have to make sure that the hours make sense. And if you're working true full-time, 40 hours a week, that's 2,080 hours a year. Now, if you have another 1,000 hours on top of that, the question is, well, what else are you doing with your time? Because it sounds like you're only working and sleeping and working and sleeping. So just be careful with time and double dipping with time if you're going to split up your hours. And I want to mention that at the very end there because that's a potential opportunity for this student. You can split activities into multiple activities. 
right? You can you can split your experience into multiple activities on your application. So this student is questioning, well, I'm a general manager now, but I started as, as a counter server. This comes up a lot with people who work for like a pre-med club in, in college. Maybe you're a, a traditional student. You just happen to be watching and listening to this. Maybe you're the president of your AMSA club now, but you started as just a member. How do you show that in your activity section? The easiest thing to do is you just split it into two activities. You have one where it's paid non-medical slash clinical experience in your activity section and you put counter server or whatever type of title you want for that experience name. And then you talk about what it was like to be a server, what it was like to, to work in customer service in the retail environment. That can be one story, one activity. And then you have another activity that you mark as leadership and you put your title as general manager and then you talk about being the general manager of the bakery and maybe you tell a story about your leadership. And that is a very easy way to capture both things. And again, timeline wise, you need to make sure that they they fit together well. You don't want to count 100 hours from your counter server time and the same 100 hours where you're a general manager, you don't want them to overlap at all. So you don't want to, what we call double dip your hours. Make sure that everything is separated. And and that's a very easy way to delineate job where it's more customer facing and leadership as a general manager where it's more employee facing. And you can highlight different strengths and weaknesses potentially in your activity section by telling those stories of when you were a general manager, when you were a counter server. And that is a very easy way to do that. This happens a lot also, just just talking in general about splitting activities. I talk about this a lot with a specific specific activity that pre-meds do a lot, and that's clinical research coordinator. I know that as a clinical research coordinator, you're doing a lot of front-facing activities with the patient, but there's also a lot of downtime where you're in the room with the patient, with a physician, waiting for the physician to be done with their aspect of whatever clinical research is going on, with their evaluations, whatever, and you're waiting for the physician to leave so that you can take that patient to the next thing that they have to do or wait for them to the, for, for the next physician or, or whoever who's going to come in to do more evaluations for whatever research is going on. That's another easy one that you can split into clinical and shadowing. Remember, on the AMCAS application, clinical and shadowing are two very separate activities. And so it's very easy to separate those, especially if you're lacking in shadowing a little bit, and you can put shadowing as one activity and clinical experience as another activity, but together, they're both being a a clinical research coordinator. So you can do that. You can have that flexibility. I I don't remember if AMCAS, the instruction manual, specifically talks about doing that. I know ACOMIS does. On the ACOMIS application instruction manual and guide, it does talk about being able to split activities into multiple entries. For AMCAS, it becomes a bigger issue because you only have 15 spots in your application. For Comus and TMDSAS, because you have unlimited spots that you can fill out, it's not an issue. So you can just split as many things as you want. But you have to be a little bit more careful with the AMCAS application because those spots are limited. So this is a great question. I, I love talking about it because it's it's a little bit of a strategy. There's not a ton of strategy that goes into the application process, but this is one area where there's a little bit of strategy that you can employ to help highlight the different things that you've been doing, especially as a non-traditional student, to make your application as truthful as possible, to show the admissions committee, to show the reviewers kind of the totality of who you are. So I hope that was helpful. Don't forget to check out blueprintmcat.com, their amazing new flashcard platform with over 1,600 flashcards there already made for you to start learning from. And remember that 
If you want more of the old pre-meds podcast, don't forget to subscribe if you don't already in your podcast player of choice, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, like most people use nowadays. Uh, but I would love for you to subscribe. And don't forget to check out the MCAT podcast that I do with Blueprint MCAT, the pre-med years podcast that I do on my own where I interview lots of people. I do tons of Q&A um, and, and so many other podcasts that we're doing here on the Med Ed Media Network. I hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the old pre-meds podcast.